Hi Frank, welcome back to UNC's videos on chat work and navigation. In this video, we're going to look at the subject of secondary ports. Before we get too far into it, what I tend to do in my navigation courses is try and simplify the information that we need from secondary ports and what it all means. And I do this by looking at the bigger picture. So this is a scaled version of the slide showing some, but not all of the secondary ports. So we've got Kit Marina, we've got Largs, we've got Fairley, Ardrossan, Rossi, Tarbot, Portavadi, Rue, just to name a few of them. We've got our standard port for the Clyde here in Greenock. Now, you'll know from doing secondary port calculations yourself that all the secondary ports are linked to a standard port, either with the corrections plus or minus minutes or hours in some cases from that standard port. Let's try and simplify what we've got on the Clyde. Okay. You see that imaginary red line that runs along the Clyde from Greenock to around the back of Greenock area. That's next to Greenock. The tide has to come upriver. So the tide is going to do that. And then consequently, once it gets to Greenock, it's going to go up to Kellogg, it's going to go up to uh, the Barton, Bowling and the Clyde, and it's going to go up Loch Long. So what this means is the tide has to reach our Drossen, Fairley, Larg, Kip, Rothsey, before it reaches Greenock. So if we're referring back to a plus or minus calculation, then to try and simplify it, the correction has to be minus high water Greenock because the tide is yet to reach there. Consequently, with Port Glasgow, Dumbarton, Bowling, Glasgow, Rue, although there's a very minimal difference, um, Kellogg Head, some places of Loch Fine as well, the tide has to get to Greenock and it will get to these places after. So then the correction will be plus. And that's laid out in exactly the same way as the training almanac. Hopefully that has simplified things. I prefer in my way of thinking to see a much bigger picture of what's going on to get a better understanding of it because then the corrections start to mean something. So let's have a look at some possible corrections. Those of you who have done theory courses will be very familiar with Namley Harbour and Farlow. And this was a ready-made PowerPoint that I use frequently on the navigation courses. So it made sense to use it again. Well, this information is all we get for second reports. And this is the, the extract page for Farlow. And it says a couple of things. Firstly, it says our standard port for Farlow is Namley Harbour. So we pull our standard port title information from Namley. If our high water at Namley is midnight or midday, then the differences at Farlow are going to be minus 40 minutes. If the high water at Namley was 6 in the morning or 6 p.m., the differences that follow would be minus 18 minutes. And it's safe to say that if the correction, the high water time, sorry, was in between midnight and 6, or 6 to 12, or 12 till 6 p.m., or 6 p.m. to midnight, any one of these two columns, the difference has to be somewhere between 40 minutes and 18. And that's the information we'd use when we're working out a second report high water time. Apply that principle for low water. 
We don't use low water time very often in tidal curves and calculating height of tide because the majority of ports are high water ports, so they need the high water time. But there are one or two examples. In the training almanac, we've got Dunbarton. In the real world, Southampton, um, Pool Harbour, they're all low water ports. So we'd use the low water time and discard the high water time. Exactly the same principle as high water. Our low water time at Namley was midnight or midday, then our correction would be 10 minutes difference. And 10 minutes earlier in this case. If it was 6 a.m. or 6 p.m., it would be 20 minutes difference. In keeping with my philosophy of trying to simplify things, we have a 10 minute difference here. If low water, as an example, was around about 2 a.m., 3 a.m., maybe 4 a.m., for the sake of arguing over a couple of minutes, I would probably just pick 15 minutes earlier as the halfway mark in between these two. If it was maybe kind of 1 or 2 a.m., maybe kind of 5 a.m. or 4.30, I would pick nearer to 18 minutes. You're only going to be a couple of minutes out. And that, in the real world, is not going to affect your tidal calculations. So how do we use our tidal heights? Well, this says if high water at Namley was 4 metres, high water at Farlow would be 0.7 metres higher. In other words, 4.7 metres. If our high water at Namley was 3.4, our correction to Farlow would be 0 0.3, so 3.7 metres at Farlow. Again, applying the principles of a high and low water time, if we've got a mean high water height or a high water height of somewhere in between 4 and 3.4, then the correction has got to be somewhere between 0 plus 0 0.7 and plus 0 0.3. And we will look at working out an example a little bit later in this video. Last of the bits of information we get is low water. 1.1 meters at low water neeps. This is a correction of plus 0 0.7 and low water 0 0.4 gives us a correction of 0 0.2 and we would add both of them on. So all the times are earlier, so the water gets to follow, the tide gets to follow before it gets to Namley. And all the tidal corrections for follow are bigger than they are at Namley. <clears throat> okay. As it says there, we've got to correct and interpolate the information that we get. And there's various ways to do this. Um, those of you who have been on the theory course with me before, especially your master theory, um, will, will be very aware of my newer way of working second reports out, as well as the grid method. And that is very similar to working out the height of tide and using the computation of rates table when we're dealing with tidal springs. So I try to keep everything as similar as I can. On the same side though, it is very possible to eyeball the difference. And I was referring back to it's a low water here, where we've only really got a 10 minute difference. So you can probably eyeball it. Same again with high water. If it's round about 3.7 meters in the middle here, then high water correction is going to be somewhere in the middle here, which is around about uh, 0.5. And you're only ever going to be about 0.1 away from the actual answer. We can draw a graph. And that is where my grid version, which we'll have a look at in a minute, comes into play. So our scenario is we're looking for the times and heights of the tide at Farlow on the afternoon of the 16th of May. 
step one is we've got to go back to Namley Harbour. That's our standard port. 16th of May, <clears throat> excuse me, which we'll highlight here. It's the afternoon and the three bits of information that I am interested in are the high water time in the afternoon, 1504, that high water and that low water. The reason I don't need to correct my 1954 low water time is because Namely is a high water port. So it's the high water time I am referring to. And I take all these information, bits of information, the high water time, height, and low water height, and I take that onto my graph. And you might need to draw one or two graphs or rotate the graph around and use the opposite corner. So we're gonna take this information here. Crucially, if this is in summertime, which the 16th of May is, don't add the hour for daylight saving time yet. Okay, or British summertime. Hold that until the correction has been done. Let's go back to Farley. And this is a PowerPoint version of my grid which was simply developed from an Excel spreadsheet with lots of boxes. And there's a link on our website on the resources page if you want to download it. So I'm looking for 1404 high water. So I know that falls somewhere between midday and 1800. So the differences will be between 40 and 18. And I have to put all four of these bits of information on this curve. So my hours got the side, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, any scale you want, as long as it's the same the whole way up. 40 minutes to 18 minutes on the bottom. And again, pick any scale you want. And I've gone for one minute just to spread it out, but that's not a problem if you want to choose two minutes. Now, whichever method you use for working your secondary board calculation out, there is one rule to follow. And that is these columns and the information have to stay together. So 12 and minus 40 minutes, 1818. You can see here a little red under my cursor between 12 p.m. and minus 40, and the same over here between 1800 and minus 18. And I draw a line between the two. You'll start to see the similarities between the computation of rates and the tidal curve. The last thing I need to do is find which hour I need down the side. And remember, we're looking at 1404. Make it two o'clock. It's four, four minutes will make no difference at all. Two o'clock, line in line down and we see we've got an instant correction of minus 32 minutes we'll make a note of that and come back to that at the end of the video for the high water height same principle these columns have to stay together i'm not interested in anything over here on the low water leaps and springs it's only this column on the high water information and I'm just going to put a red box around that. That's the information that goes into this PowerPoint page here. So high water height, 2.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 8, 9, and 4. That's the information I get for Namly. High water correction along the bottom, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3. Again, all I get and I join the information up. So first red dot that appeared, four meters and 0.7, that columns together, and 3.4 and 0 0.3, and that columns together. Draw the line as we did on the previous one. 
This time we are looking for 3.7 meters. Draw along till you meet the line, draw down, and we can see the correction is plus 0 0.5 meters. So we'd add that on to our 3.7 meters at Namli to get our corrected high water height at Farlow. Then we switch our attention to our low water information and the red box has moved to there. 1.1, 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1.9, 0.8, 0.7, 0.6, 0.5, 0.4. <clears throat> okay, apologies, the 0 0.4 has been emitted from there. Don't know where it's gone, but it's still marked in the right place. So 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 has also disappeared, but it should be there. Got to love PowerPoints. The correction, 0.6 and down. So the correction will be somewhere between 0 0.4 and 0 0.3. It's closer to 0 0.3. That's the information I would take on. So plus 0 0.3 meters on my low water height. So this is what all this information means. So what do we actually do with the corrections? Well, we know that our standard pot was Namli, and that high water was 1404 UT. We worked out that it's 32 minutes correction for Farley. So that takes our high water time back to 1332. And then we add one hour on 1432 DST. So that's the information that would go into our tidal curve if we were working out a height of tide at Farley. Namely, our standard pour height was 3.7 and our low water height was 0 0.6. And we can see here with both the corrections of plus 0 0.5 for our high water and plus 0 0.3 for our low water, it's corrected heights of 4.2 for high water and 0 0.9 for low water. And that's the other two bits of information that would go into our tidal curve. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please do check out our YouTube video page where there are multiple videos. And so on our resources page on our website, there are a chunk of available resources there. Thank you.